Please welcome to the stage writer and director Cameo Wood. So as always for our Q&A, you guys ask the questions, Cameo will give the answers. Remember you can tweet your questions to hashtag SBFF. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. The question is, what is your background? Uh, so I have a background in engineering. I was a voice over IP engineer for a while. I studied artificial intelligence and neuroscience at Duke, Bard, Bennington, and a little bit at Stanford. So I have like kind of a varied <laughs> background. Yeah. Oh, and I've only been filmmaking for four years. So this is my first narrative film. Do you have a question? Yes. The question is, how long did it take to make the movie? Um, so about six months of planning, and most of that was just on paper and um, rewriting the script and talking about the script and uh, making sure that it was good enough and ready to do. And then we shot it over three days, um, 35 millimeter in Oakland, California. And then we did the post, that means editing, uh, VFX, and sound, and that took about seven months. It's about a year. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. How did you find the lead actress, lead actresses? Let's go with both of them. So um, the older woman who was interviewing, that's Tamlin Tamita. You might know her from, she started in Karate Kid Part Two. She was also in the Joy Luck Club and Picture Bride. Uh, so with her, we had a mutual friend of a friend of a friend who I got her email from. And I emailed her and I said, oh my gosh, she'd be the perfect person. And like, wrote this detailed letter. And the author of the short story that the movie is based on wrote her a letter. We gave her costume designs and the script. and. It was like a 20 page email and I was so nervous that I hit send and then like a day later she replied and said, sure sounds cool, cut me in. And I'm like, whew. Um, but Tiffany was much harder. Um, we went through about 70 people looking for things and it just so happened like everyone was just kind of the best person ever. And so as soon as we emailed them, they'd be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be in the new Thor movie or I'm gonna be on this new TV show. So I just apparently had amazing taste, which meant I had to go through a lot, a lot of people. But it turned out, you know, Tiffany was somebody I knew about because I remember seeing her on Bones and she was just, I couldn't keep my eyes off of her. And when we thought, when we were talking about her, I was like, I don't know, like she might be just too like big of a deal. And, um, and then we started talking and then she was also into Game of Thrones. And so we bonded over Game of Thrones. She's like, all right, you know, Sunday night, this is, and now I know what we're doing. So that's how she came on to the show. Yeah. Another question? Yes, right there, I see you. Yeah, so where's the idea of the story from? So um, the original short story is based, um, so it was written by this guy named Ken Liu, who now is, um, He's the translator for a book called The Third Body Problem. Um, he was the translator for that, which is a pretty well-known science fiction book. But I read the short story originally in a publication put out by MIT called The Technology Review. So I read it, and I was actually on an airplane, and I emailed him while I was 10,000 feet in the air, and I said, hey, I want to make a movie on this. And he's like, cool, it's yours. So it was pretty easy, but I will say that the original short story um, had a male interviewer, and I did change that because I felt like this was um, a little bit more appropriate for what I was trying to do. And I also changed the ending. So his short story ends when she's presented with, do you want this job or not? Here's this button. And then I added the additional ending. Yes, sir. Did I enjoy it? That's a good question. No one's ever asked me that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, making movies is a bunch of, it's a bunch of tasks. You need to be able to, um, to you know, to really multitask and and understand how all the parts blend in together. And uh, so the, the pre-production is really difficult because you have to really believe in your story and yourself and say like, is it really done enough for me to get, you know, 40 people to come together over three days and spend like a whole year's salary on like feeding everyone and really making it happen and like, is it finally ready to pull the trigger? And then you have three days of glorious exultation for filming and then you get it back and you're like, oh no, what have I done? Is this really good enough? And how am I gonna make this ever good enough? Then you have seven months of, you know, good days and bad days. And then finally you have to say, done. And then you hope that you get to play it in a place like this if you're super lucky, which thankfully I am. So thank you very much. So did you enjoy it? Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely, it's, it's the best job in the world, and how fortunate we are as filmmakers to be able to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir, in the blue shirt. The question is, should we be worried about AI? Um, you know, I think it's, um, AI is a tool just like any others. I mean, you know, I'm sure everyone here has, you know, hit their thumbs with hammers, and I don't know how worried we all are about hammers. Um, I think that, you know, Elon Musk, you might have heard, is like, you know, very concerned about the coming AI apocalypse. Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, other people like Mark Zuckerberg thinks that he's an alarmist. I think it's a tool like any other. I think that we have to be circumspect of all of our tools. I think that we have to be aware of what they can and can't do. Um, it can be a very powerful technology, but I think that we're also pretty smart, and I think that we just need to appeal to the graciousness of our humanity and um, try to do the best that we can with all of our tools and each other. Yeah. Yes, sir. So were you influenced by science fiction, Rod Serling, Soylent Green? Yes. Um, yes. So in fact, when I was pitching this to people, I was like, it's sort of like, you know, Twilight Zone. And people were like, I don't, I don't really know what that is. I'm like, well. <laughs> um, so now, younger people, younger audiences, a lot of them say, like, it's just like Black Mirror. I'm like, or Twilight Zone. And they're like, well, I don't know about that. So <laughs> what can you do, man? Um, but yeah, so definitely. And it's funny that you said time travel because um, you know, one of the things that happens when you're doing a memory erasing storyline is that you have to have this idea of, you know, so the main character is Sophia Baker. So one of the things that I did early on with one of my producers was, was figure out what is her experience throughout the day if she only has like a couple of seconds in between all these memory wipes, you know, to remember her day. So what's her day experience like? And that's why we had to make sure it was consistent. So it's very much like a time travel movie. So astute question. It's pretty much like my job. It's a mind wipe every day, so. Uh, yes, sir. How many people did it with? How many people did we use to make the movie? Um, like, in front of the camera, is that your question? Or like, in the crew? Um, so around, like actually on the set, around 40 people, but I would say about 100 people contributed in some way. Yeah, so it was a lot. I mean, but some of those people, it could be so much as like, hey, you have a trailer renting company and I need three trailers for three days. Can you help me out and get a discount? Yes. So other parts of it were, you know, hey, will you work for me for a year on this thing and do it for no money? Yes? Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> variable commitment. I was curious, how hard was, was it for you to get the uh, special effects done? Was that very expensive or not? Um, so the special effects graphics, um, we, I, I basically went out on Facebook and I said, hey, I need somebody to help design a user interface for the artificial intelligence. Does anybody know a guy? And um, a friend of mine said, actually, I do. And he designs the user interface for Apple and for Facebook. And he's always wanted to work on movies. And he actually makes props just in his spare time for fun. And he came over and looked at everything. And I um, was very prepared. I just had hundreds of storyboards. And I had a really good idea of what I was doing. And we went over, you know, the script, and he had a couple of, you know, quibbles with it. And I was like, you're right, you know, let, let's fix them right now. And, he, you know, he said, I can work with you. And so, yeah, so he worked for a whole year doing the pre-production and the post-production, did all the graphics, and, um, you know, while working a job at both Apple and Facebook doing all that. So that's how we got it done. And he delivered them in, like, keynote presentations. And because he knows how to do it, you know, for tech jobs, not for movies. And when I gave them to my animator, my animator was like, this isn't really how we make films. This isn't, we, we don't get like keynote presentations. And it's like, well, that's how we're doing this one. I don't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am, you had a question? Sure. So the question is about the ending and why did you change the ending? Yeah, so I think, you know, when I read the original ending, I didn't really want it to be left just to the audience about like what would she decide because that's still true. We don't really know what she decides. But if we believe that the power of the AI is really so great that it can tell these great narratives, then maybe it can concoct a narrative that would convince her to finally say yes to the job. Um, and so part of the reason why I wanted to have this ending was that while I'm actually fairly confident that we will have AI even more deeply entrenched in our lives than we do right now, like with Spotify and Pandora and our maps and our cars all having AI, um, I do think that it's fair to be circumspect of all technology. 
and to really question how we feel, especially as artists, about the integration of this, this technology into our workflow. So I think that was really what I was trying to address in that, is that um, you know, some, some of the sinister uses of tools. Cameo Wood, everyone. Thank you.